This is the I'm Him Sports Podcast Show, whatever you want to call it. My name is Matthew King, and next to me here is my boy Jake Morris. I think a ton of people are super pissed off about this college football playoff. And even I didn't watch college football all year, and I'm like super fucking pissed off at the people being pissed off. Oh, so, so are you pissed off about all the FSU fans that are upset about them missing the playoff? Yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me. I know that we talk about NFL here, but the the thing that I tweeted out was I said that the four teams, it was like an hour before the decision, the four teams that should have made it was who they selected. So Alabama, Texas, Washington, and Michigan. Michigan, yeah. Yeah, so those four teams were absolutely the best teams in college football, and you can argue Georgia. I think there is a better argument for Georgia than there was for FSU because if, I mean, even DraftKings even said if if FSU was in the college football playoffs and they were playing Michigan, the spread would have been 13 points. The spread right now for Alabama and Michigan is one and a half. Yeah, yeah. No, I, what I will say is I think it is it is completely unfair that FSU did get left out. I mean, they, they won a Power 5 championship. They won undefeated. But at the end of the day, these guys are trying to get the four best teams into the playoff. And um, honestly, uh, personally, I'm more upset that Georgia didn't make it. I mean, they were if everyone said that they were the best team in the entire nation for however long until this yeah. past week. And I get it. You lose to Alabama. And putting Texas in, you have to put Alabama like like they had to put – if they were putting Alabama in, they had to put Texas in because Texas obviously beat them. But um, I would, like Stephen A. Smith honestly said it best. TCU was probably the reason FSU did not make it into the playoffs mm. because of what happened last year. And yes, they they made it to the championship, but then lost thir- sixty five to seven. Yeah, and if FSU somehow snuck in to yes. the <laughs> to the championship, it would be an absolute wreck. Yeah, and so I agree with that. Honestly, I didn't I didn't really watch the the two games that Jordan Travis didn't play in, but I heard a lot of comparison saying that they were an Iowa S team phenomenal defense but the offense was struggling to score points obviously not as bad as Iowa's offense I mean they're they are <laughs> god awful, oh my but. god dude um so I went to Philly this weekend and I'll talk about that in a second but it was just the boys and we all said we're all betting on the same things this weekend so we all agreed we're all gonna bet on the same shit yeah. so I said all right I want to take Alabama we all take Alabama we're at the bar we go freaking nuts when they went straight up right so then, so then I said, well, no, someone else from the group, uh, I forget his name. God, I wish I could shout him out. He was really cool. But he said that he has this guy who his dad knows who's an actual sharp, like his, his actual full-time job is sports betting. Mm-hmm. And he gives out these picks. And I never fully believe these guys, but like this guy was like, oh, I've made $10,000 all year. He showed me like all of his bets. Like it was legit. So I was like, okay, like. What has he got tonight? His first five unit play in like three months, Louisville money line. I was like, oh my God, Louisville against FSU. Yeah. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll take it. I only put a half a unit on it because right. I didn't fully trust it. And we were all sitting there and then we had FSU fans next to us and they were screaming, the, oh, like all that bullshit. I couldn't freaking stand it. They lose. And then I go and bet the Michigan Iowa over. And of course, Michigan covers and it doesn't go over. So it was, it was just a fucking wreck. But watching FSU, I watched FSU was my point. And that was that would have been a hundred percent the worst college football playoff team of all time. It would have been worse than any any team that I can think of. There was nobody that was gonna be worse than FSU. Not one. Yeah, I mean that's that's the problem. And like that's honestly why I don't know. Michigan Michigan has, I feel like, stepped up on offense this year, but that's what scares me is that like most of the time they're in some of the like unless they're playing a really bad team like it's a, it's a, and it's a blowout like yes they can they just can't score a lot like that's when you're when you make it to the college football playoff like all these games like college football in general it's high scoring like you exactly. need a good offense like and like a good, having a good defense can get you so far like Michigan like is usually there at the end but like when they don't have a good that's why they haven't won a national championship since the college football playoffs has come around. Yeah, and it's not it's not the fucking most deserving teams. It is the fucking best four teams in college football, and FSU without their star quarterback is not one of those. No. And it just like it 
I was so excited when Alabama got in because I'm like, who the seriously, who the hell wants to watch FSU play Michigan? Yeah, like, and yeah. you saw Michigan when FSU wasn't announced either. That was fucking crazy. Did you see that video of yeah. all of them like gasp? Yeah. When Al- that tells you that they are more scared of Alabama, which means they're they even know they're the better team. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And like I said, honestly, I would have rather seen Georgia get in there. Yeah. And I get it. Like Alabama just beat them. Um, but whatever. But. And I, I, I agree it's unfair that FSU didn't make it. They had the criteria. They had everything. But as a football fan, like, you do not – you did not want FSU to actually get in there. We all know how that game would have went. Michigan, FSU exactly. probably would have ended up in a blowout. Like, and it just – it would it, – it's not a game that, like, I am so much more excited to watch Alabama versus Michigan than I would be uh, FSU versus Michigan. Exactly. It was just – I just could not believe the amount of people that were upset and – cause an uproar about it i mean the committee did such a good job and for them to say that it was the sec bias the sec is the best conference in america like of course there's bias towards the sec they have the best teams but georgia i wish georgia would have gotten in i like texas personally uh, yeah no no i I agree like personally i if i i don't i don't know about seedings or anything like that i would have rather seen michigan georgia alabama and texas get in there Oh, because over Washington? Agreed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Because if you think about it, like I guess, I, like I said, I'm not I'm not the biggest college football fan. I like to watch it when it's on Saturdays, obviously. Um, but like, they're I guess they're not they're not in the same situation because of FSU. But like they had kind of the same criteria. They went undefeated. They won the, the Pac-12 championship. But like, I, they they've been in a lot of close games this year against like good opponents. Like I guess beating Oregon is obviously huge for them. Um, but I just I don't know. I would I thought that Georgia. Michigan, Alabama, and Texas were the four best teams in the country. Yeah, and I, I love I Michael Penix. I do. I think honestly, he's probably the best quarterback. I, I don't. I think he has to come out because he's yeah. a, his sixth yeah. year. Yeah. But um, I think he probably has the most talent. Well, uh, it's hard to say. Cause I know. He, I think he he doesn't have this. He's on almost the same level as Caleb Williams, but I think yeah. he's more NFL ready than Caleb Williams is. I will say that. Yeah, this past weekend was one of the best college football weekends I've experienced. Like. It made me actually like it, and I'm so excited to watch it. For someone who doesn't watch college football, like, I'm so fucking excited to, like, I'm like, let's get this on the, like, let's get it on now. I hate that it takes a month yeah. for the games to even be played. I understand that the kids have to go home or whatever. Like, play the damn game yeah, now. Yeah. Like, it's so fucking annoying. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, and this weekend was absolutely insane for me personally because I got to experience so I haven't been to Philly very much I went there once and I basically went there as a tourist and got to see a Liberty Bell uh what I got to give Philly credit for is their love for sports like I understood like how much they like sports so I roll in the person I was staying with lived in Philly like downtown Philly and the the People had jerseys on. They had their dogs wearing jerseys. They had their cats wearing jerseys. They were screaming "Go Birds!" in the middle of the freaking in the middle of traffic. Like it was just the coolest like sports town I've ever been to. And when we went out, we went to like the Santa Claus bar crawl or something like that. And like everybody was like just repping Philadelphia, and it was really cool. But their fans are insane like so one of my friends flew in from california to go watch the game because he's a 49ers fan my other guy he's a philadelphia eagles fan and no joke the eagles fan told him not to wear a jersey to the game that's how like crazy they are and i i don't know if i like that that's the one criteria or one criticism i would say i have a philly is like how i understand if someone's yapping at you and like getting on your nerves but you can't even wear a a jersey to a game like I feel like if I went and I might just be saying this just to bullshit I might be saying this you know acting like that I'm confident but like I bought my team's gear and I'm repping my team like I don't know if you would but I'm I'm repping my team like I'm not sitting back and yeah no I I will say this about Philly fans like they are I would say that they're in the top three most passionate fan bases in the NFL for sure but they're also like really ruthless like it's like it's it's pretty bad like like you just said, like your your friend that's a Philly fan told your uh, – th- did he end up wearing his jersey? No, again? he no? didn't. Yeah, I mean that's – And I told him he was soft. I <laughs> thought I thought he was soft. Yeah, you say that, but I mean those those fans really do not give a fuck. Like I, I don't – this might this might, this might might not hold true anymore, but I think that uh, the, the link, Lincoln Financial Field, yeah. their field, yeah. like 
I don't know if it's still there, but like they were one of the only stadiums that actually had like a holding cell. Yeah, they have stadium. a jail. Yeah, yeah. essentially. And yeah, and I think I think it used to be them in Las Vegas or uh, Oakland. Oakland, Oakland. Yeah. But obviously they're not. They're in Las Vegas now, so I think they might be probably the only stadium or one of the very few that actually have like a jail in in their stadium now because of how crazy it gets and. Right, but he spent he spent so much money to fly there, get tickets. And, you know, going out in Philly and spending money on these local bars, like, so you're telling me he can't rap. I get it if someone is, like, just won't shut the hell up. Like, I'm like that if fans come to Baltimore. Like, I'm like, okay, it's cool that you're repping your team. Like, I've met some cool opposing fans that, like, you know, they'll they'll cheer for their team. They'll talk shit, but they won't, they won't get too much. I'm like, I don't care if you wear another jersey. I think it's impressive when teams come to other – stadiums and they rap and show off how much they can fill that stadium like and there were a lot of 49ers fans at that Eagles game which was impressive in itself and they all wore jerseys I didn't hear of anything that was nuts but I just think that it's maybe he's not soft because you know he has to fly back and all that stuff but at the same time I'm just like if I spent all this money to come here like and on Philly, like I'm, I'm gonna wear my shit. And did, did he end up going to the game? Yeah, he did. He did. Oh, yeah. He did. Well, that's, uh, dude. I, I, at at some point, it kind of does become about safety. To be honest, like, <laughs> I guess there's, there's so many stories. I mean, like you, you know, like we went to Pittsburgh, and yes, we didn't get any physical altercations, but like but they were bad at some point. They were very bad, and they were like yeah. in your ear and like doing some really obnoxious like shit. And, yeah. Like Philly is the same way, if not worse. Like, and this, I mean, this has kind of become. It's not. It's not a obviously Baltimore and uh, Pittsburgh rivalry yet but like they're 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 starting to be the top two seeds in the NFC and like after what happened in the NFC championship game there was already a lot of like talk going into this game and whatnot and yeah Debo Samuel talked his shit he did and he backed that shit up and you know who else talked their shit is Big Dom he from did. the Eagles he I did. mean I got I gotta give it to that dude he he fucking stepped up and he fucking talked his shit he's a true Philadelphia Eagle. He is part of the team now. He is. He he's honestly. I and I I I did see that they were looking into him having more like uh, consequences coming from that. But like oh that God. day, that that one incident made him a Philly legend for years to come. If I'm yeah. going to be honest. Yeah. Of course, it, it it's hard to say that because they ended up losing the game in the fashion that they did. Yeah, pretty bad. But still, <laughs> Big Dom is he he was he became a Philly legend at least for the week. Yeah, I mean, and also like. Throwing out Dre Greenlaw, like out of that game, yeah, was yeah. so fucking yeah. stupid. Like it's a like they were just all everybody was chirping. Yeah. I mean, what is the big deal? He barely even touched him. Like yeah. he put his hand out, let him know, like, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But like Well, that's what the big Dom put his hands on him first yeah, exactly. is the issue. Exactly. And like a coach, uh, well, I think he's head of security. He's not even a coach, yeah. like technically. Like <laughs> you have no like I guess he was upset maybe like he's passionate because like I guess Drake Greenlaw slammed Devontae Smith or whatever but like that wasn't a legal hit that wasn't anything like uh maybe maybe he could have let him up or whatever but like he has no he has no he's in no situation to put his hands on Drake Greenlaw there I agree and all he did was like he like pointed his finger out and it happened to like like brush his nose or something and it's like I guess with a referee, yeah, if you do any contact with them, but like he put his hands on him first, like right. So I don't know, and that's uh, I, so I I watched it with my brother and my nephew. Brother's a huge 49ers fan. A nephew is a huge Eagles fan, and they were I mean the whole game they were chirping the whole time. But for a second there, like we didn't think Big Dom was gonna get thrown out of the stadium either. Like they yeah, thought, well, no. I thought I thought Drake Greenlaw was gonna be the only one to get ejected. But yeah, I thought for sure that they were not gonna throw out the head of security because I didn't see what happened at first. Um, but I'm pulling up this article right now, and it's from the SF Gate. I'm guessing this is a San Francisco-based uh, page, and it says, Jerry Rice says, I would have punched Eagles security guy at middle of 49ers controversy. Do you, uh, okay, first of all, he's not fucking doing that. I don't think anybody's doing that. Do you think anybody in the league like would have actually like knowing the rules and knowing like what's going on like do you think anybody would have actually like put her put their hands on him like that? I don't know, especially after watching uh, the Chiefs the Chiefs game where Pacheco would just do a random left hook. Yeah, that was somebody. wild. But um, no, I mean like it really wasn't even that big of an altercation. Like in my opinion, Big Dom shouldn't have put his hands on him, and like like he he gave him like a bit of a push. But like honestly, I wish Drake Gron- Greg 
Dre Greenlaw would have punched him, to be honest. He, yeah. already, he was already getting ejected. So. Yeah, why don't we just get on? We should just put him on the field. Yeah, honestly. And just let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, we yeah. should just let Dre Greenlaw. He he can probably play offensive tackle. Probably, freaking big dom. Probably. Put him at offensive tackle or offensive guard and bring the fucking blitz and let's see what you got. Like, I agree. I agree. Like, they let, the, they let them fight in hockey, like, just... And people, they're so fucking dumb for throwing. Speaking of Pacheco, I know this is different, but throwing hands on somebody with a fucking helmet on has got to be the dumbest fucking move from anybody in the NFL. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, at the end of the day, these these uh, these helmets are they're they're hard. They're like you're hurting yourself more when you punch somebody than than hurting the other player. Like yeah. it's. It's wild. And then you're going to end up freaking breaking your hand, and then you're just going to be in the news. You're going to be the bozo. Like, yep. even if you got a good right, left hook, whatever, like, why are they not throwing body shots? Like, yeah. I feel like the body is like, if you really want to do damage, like, you hit them right in the gut, like, yeah. that's yeah. a knockout shot. No, I'm, I'm here for, uh, we bring out hockey rules, and when there's an altercation that's that bad, I mean... I don't know how we're going to do it because they don't have soft gloves on or anything, <laughs> but let's rip the helmets off and let's go at it. At least for, like, there should be, like, a time limit. Like, like I think hockey, they give them, like, a yeah, couple punches. Yeah. Like, like give them, like, one minute. Like, you get one minute, just yeah. fucking go at yeah. it. Like And maybe maybe it's even keep the helmets on and just see who can body slam the other person more. Right. And but it has to be, like, you have to be, I guess... Like, I don't know. Let's see. I would like to see, you know, like not Trent Williams and Devontae Smith <laughs> going at it. <laughs> like, that would be, be at wild. least the same position. Yeah. I, they have to play the same position to make it work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I feel like there are some defensive linemen, like imagine 2D tackles going at it. That yeah, would be fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah. No, I'd love to see, I'd love to see like a Trent Williams, Aaron Donald sort of thing. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, I, Somebody, uh, the people who I fight right now is. The people who are claiming, speaking of the game, are, are claiming Brock Purdy is the MVP because this guy, I mean, he's good. And I, I talked with my San Francisco 49 fan. I told him, I said, he's good. He's not really good. And I don't understand where the MVP is coming from because I didn't come out of that game and say, yeah, yeah, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's way better than Dak Prescott this year. Like, no, he's not. I don't even think he's been better than Jalen Hurts this year. I came out of that game thinking, wow, the 49ers are the greatest football team that I have ever seen talent-wise, ever in my life. They are the most talented team I've ever seen. Yeah, and that's I I don't know. I wish I wish I did. I wish I had taken some notes on this on this interview that I watched. And it's because Brock Purdy is first in a lot of things. Like he's, he's first in like QBR and completion percentage. But there's also another one like people were throwing out this yak yardage that all of his receivers have. Yeah. And it's like the past there's been I think the past like four or five MVPs, the average is like I think the average yak yards for a um for a quarterback's forty seven in the NFL. Forty seven percent. Um but the past few MVPs has been like 48% and Brock Purdy right now is at 48 and a half percent. I think last year when Patrick Mahomes won MVP, he had something like a 54% yak yards at like, so it's at like his receivers, like, I don't know how they did it, but like yeah. he was up there in yak yards as well. So like that, that argument for me doesn't really work. Yeah, yes, they have, they have a ton of talent, but like you still, you still have to be a competent quarterback to get the ball to those, to those receivers. So like, right. I don't know. I, I, I don't think him being the favorite to win MVP at this it's point in the nuts. season is nuts to me. It, it, it I is might have nuts. to take the value on Dak Prescott at this moment. I know that he's like up there. I think he I think Brock Purdy's plus three hundred and Dak is like plus three twenty five. But I just I I didn't like the eye test. Like just watching him, like he's good. Like I'm like he does everything right. He gets rid of the ball when he's supposed to. He gets the ball out quickly. But I just don't see the throws that make me go like, wow, he's like better than every single quarterback that I've watched this year. I say, wow, Debo Samuel is one of the most unique players in the NFL. Brandon Ayuk should probably be a starting wide receiver on every other team. Christian McCaffrey is the probably the best running back in the past decade. Like, I just don't see that about Purdy. Like, I see all of his teammates like being like special and I just don't see that special like and I don't see him go and win games for the 49ers. I see him be a part of winning the game. Yeah. I never see him be the reason, yeah. but I see Dak Prescott be the reason why the Cowboys are doing so well. So like that's my separation of it. Um but I just don't I I just I don't know. I don't want to say like he's not a top 
10 quarterback because he probably is sneaking in there for me. But the yeah. MVP is just crazy. No, I, I mean, I, I'm, uh, this might, I support I support the argument for it. Like, I, I love to see it. But, like, I guess the, the thing is, is, like, when you have all that talent, if you're not – you're keeping like you're not losing games for your team, and I guess you could say that about a lot of quarterbacks. But like statistically, he like he is up there. He is doing pretty well. I guess he doesn't have the numbers that Dak does, but they're also winning big games. And right. Dallas Cowboys are not right now. Um, right. And I think that's that's a big part of the MVP conversations. It's not just like about stats. Like similarly to the Heisman conversation, Jane Daniels right now had has had better number like has better numbers than Joe Burrow did when he won MVP yeah. or uh, Heisman. But like there was an argument that. LSU's just kind of been like this. They they've stayed ranked or whatever, but like they're not in the college football like playoff even like conversation. So why are they going to give it to him? So right. I think it's something similar to that. Um, but I, like I don't know. It's because like Jimmy G. I mean he was he he did kind of the same thing. Like they won a lot of games with the talent they had. He didn't even have CMC, but like his name and I guess he didn't have the statistics that Brock Purdy yeah. did. But I mean he's way better than Jimmy was. Yeah, at, yeah. at his tenure, even when. Jimmy went to Super Bowl. He's just like way better. If the 49ers don't make the Super Bowl, though, I, I I'm gonna clown them because this is the best yeah. team that I have ever seen um, on the offense, at least since I've been watching football, which has been about 20 years. So uh, they're just nuts. But uh, speaking of the MVP odds that I was talking about earlier with betting um, and so much betting this weekend. I found an absolute cheat code to sports betting this past weekend. So when the Seahawks and Cowboys played, I always heard this stigma that like the Sharps come in early and the Sharps come in late. So I'm thinking to myself, like, do do I just wait until last second and see how the line moves? So I'm going to teach everybody how I've done it this past weekend. And it worked. It went five and one this past weekend. So what you do is I open three sportsbooks apps. So I open ESPN, Bet, FanDuel, and DraftKings. FanDuel it doesn't happen as much, but ESPN, Bet, and DraftKings, it's been working really well. So I have them all open with 10 minutes left until the game. So I sit there for about 10 minutes, and then right before the game starts, about a minute or two right before the game, you'll see the lines start to move. So you'll, like, for example, with Seattle and the Cowboys, um, I didn't even like put any research into it, but I wanted to bet the game. So I just had interest in it. And I just opened the sports books app, waited one minute, and then the line moved from I think Dallas was minus 10 at one point mm -hmm. or minus nine and a half. And it went down a half a point to Seattle, even though everybody was on Dallas. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just take Seattle because those are probably the sharps. It hit with ease, no sweat, did the same thing. Only team that it didn't work for was the Patriots. God, awful. <laughs> the worst football team I've ever seen in my life and actually watched. I can't believe I watched that entire game. I but can't believe you bet on it. I know. I think I'm going to call the number for you. I know. Honest. That was bad. That I, I should have known. I should have said, I don't care how it moves. Like, I'm not going to bet it. But the, uh, the other games, it worked uh, for the Green Bay game. I didn't end up betting it because I was a pussy and didn't want to bet. Jordan Love because I did it earlier in the year and it I, he's special but anyway but it worked for the Bengals it worked for a couple other teams so give it a shot just wait if you don't feel like researching or anything like just wait two minutes before the game and see which way the line moves and just take that team and see how it works I'm gonna see how it works for the next two weeks but I mean it, it went pretty insane um but so speaking of quarterbacks with Brock um there's been a lot of injuries this past season probably the most that we've ever seen with starting quarterbacks yeah. and I just want to take a second and let people know like that people have shit on Lamar Jackson for his problems with injury the past two years okay and they always said that the issue is is that it's these running quarterbacks it, the problem has never been if it does not bring any more injury risk for a quarterback to run rather than sit in the pocket the entire time. In my opinion, I think a quarterback who is a statue in the pocket is more likely to tear his ACL because he's stagnant in the pocket. So Cincinnati fans who have sat here and told me 
that Lamar Jackson has injury problems. Well, look at Joe Burrow. He's missed more games than Lamar Jackson has in his entire career. Well, what about a great pocket passer like Kirk Cousins out for the year? What about Aaron Rodgers, who's become, you know, less mobile as his career gone, torn Achilles? Like, you cannot help. Injuries are based off of bad luck. Like, it's just the wrong play at the wrong time. And I am just so freaking sick of all of these people saying that these mobile quarterbacks are more prone to get injured because it's not freaking true. So I'm going to pull up, I don't know what you think about it, but I'm going to pull up this graphic of all of the quarterbacks that have gotten hurt this past year. Man, you were really passionate about that one. Yeah. I really, hey, really. I, I just cannot stand when people talk about Lamar Jackson and his injury problems when he probably has missed less games than some of these quarterbacks who are known to be pocket passers. Yeah, no, I, I definitely I heard the I heard the fire in your voice. So yeah, I mean looking looking at the list here, there's maybe two and then three arguably that are actually like mobile quarterbacks. So yeah. looking at the list here, I got Burrow, Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, Anthony Richardson, Deshaun Watson, Daniel Jones, Kenny Pickett, and Trevor Lawrence. Yep. Out of those, I mean Richardson, I'd say is definitely a mobile yeah, quarterback for sure. Daniel Jones, yeah, like I guess so. Like he, I feel like he's a pocket passer, but that can move. And then I guess Watson, but like he, I feel like he's be trying to become more of a pocket passer. Yeah, and both of them got hurt in the pocket too. So Daniel Jones got hurt in the pocket, and so did Deshaun Watson. Right, right, yeah, so, no, no, for sure, for sure. And that's I, I don't know, like I feel like I feel like a lot of like this argument is like it comes to like running backs and wide receivers, and it's like for the most part it's because they like they make these hard cuts. But like watching Lamar, like he's such a smooth, like fluent runner. Like I don't, I don't really think that that's like an issue for him. Yes, he's got a more possibility, I guess, to take a big hit. But it's also not like I don't think I have more of an issue like with a like lower extremity issue with him like right like taking a big hit from a middle linebacker you're like sure your knee can get bent up on or whatever but he doesn't take those big hits like he's he's just so he's so slimy or something like he's just like <laughs> boss <laughs> boss <laughs> boss <laughs> huge pause yeah I I understand what you're saying though is that the it, just to be honest like the stigma has just risen because of Lamar Jackson because they didn't so the first thing was he's not a passer and then they're like oh shit he's a fucking passer like a really good passer and then they're like okay well he gets injured too much well okay so let's talk about this list uh Joe Burrow is the one that pisses me off the most just because Cincinnati fans have shit on fucking Lamar every single year and they they said that they beat us in the playoffs with Tyler Huntley well we fucking swept you and you're saying that you're going in with Jake Browning when Jake Browning looked like a top 10 quarterback last night. So which one is it? Because then they're saying that Jake Browning is really good and one of the best backups in the league. I saw all last night. And then they're saying, oh, well, you played Jake Browning, so it doesn't count. But when we played Tyler Huntley, it counts when you beat us in the playoffs and you sent us home. Like, the shit is so freaking annoying. And I, I don't know. I just – I think that quarterbacks are more prone – to get injured if they are just more stagnant in the pocket because that just means that some guy is going to roll up on your ankle, some guy's going to hit you in the knees. Like like what you said about Lamar, like when he gets out of the pocket, he's smart. He knows where the boundary is. He tries to get out of bounds. He also makes the right moves. You can tell like when he's going to make a juke move, like you can tell he's like looking around to make sure he's not going to get that second hit. And if he does, I mean, if he tried to – make those kind of moves like in certain situations he will have gotten hurt way earlier than this but yeah I, you know he seems very mindful when he's running like i said there's just something about his running style that it's like he's a running back yeah <laughs> he no he is like he's a running back I, and a quarterback I like he's I a very believe, smart runner can't believe you just said that yeah he's a uh, he's a running back and a quarterback like not saying like there's just no <laughs> way that you can't say he's not a running back like he runs he's probably better he's probably Top 10, maybe top 15 running back in the league. Like, in all honesty, if you think about it. No, honestly, I mean, watching him when he runs, he's electric. Like, he, he is. And, like, he's got he's got, he's got got the vision of a running back for sure. And then it's just on top of that, like, being, being the face of the franchise, like being a quarterback, you can also kind of tell that, yes, he's willing to put his body on the line, but when he doesn't have to, like, he's very, like, I know I used the word slimy earlier, but like I don't know, I don't know how to how else to put it. Like he just knows how to not take a big hit right. is the thing, and like there's never been a time where like he makes a huge cut where I'm like, oh god, like his knee's gonna pop. Like right. I just don't see like his his running is so fluent, it's so smooth. Like 
I just don't I don't see the risk for him that all these people are like talking about. Right. And all of his injuries have been in the pocket, <clears throat> by the way, just so everybody knows that. Um, speaking of, let's talk let's talk about the the Ravens and let's talk about the AFC number one seed. So the Ravens right now are the number two seed, and the Dolphins are the number one seed, fraudulent as shit. Um, they have not beaten a good team this year. So, uh, But who do you think is going to get the number one seed in the AFC? So looking at the remaining schedules. So Baltimore, their remaining schedule is probably the toughest. They have the Rams who are surging. They have the Jaguars if they have Trevor Lawrence, the 49ers, Dolphins, and Steelers. The Chiefs have the Bills, Patriots, Raiders, Bengals, Chargers. That one's kind of tough with the Bills and maybe even the Bengals with the way that the Chiefs are playing right now. Um, and then the Dolphins have the Titans, Jets, Cowboys, and Bills left. So that's a really tough schedule in itself as well. Um, so who do you think is going to come out of the AFC as the number one seed so and get the bye week? Man, it's tough because I, I know a few weeks ago, we I think we both even said the Chiefs were still going to get the number one seed, but... After they just dropped this game to the Packers, like and I know the Packers, like they're playing pretty well right now, but I, but, and I, I still want to lean Chiefs looking at this remaining schedule. But I like know. I said, after watching this past this past weekend, like I just I don't know, like I don't know what's going on with that team. Um, but also looking at the Ravens' schedule, like they've they've got a pretty tough one, and maybe they get a break with with Jacksonville not having Trevor Lawrence. Like I did see that his injury doesn't look like it's going to be as severe as what they thought. Exactly. Um, but you guys still have the 49ers and then the Dolphins. Like, we don't know what kind of team they really – I feel like I still don't know what kind of team they are, to be honest. Like, I think they can – Yeah, after they, can, they beat you by 40? Yeah, I don't <laughs> – You I figured it gonna, out then. Well, I don't know why you had to, I don't know why you had to bring that up. But. <laughs> I just had to throw it straight. Because <laughs> looking at them, like, they're – like the, I stand the same way with them that I do with the Cowboys. And maybe – like maybe I feel a little bit better about the Dolphins because I'm watching midseason hard knocks with the Dolphins. Oh Jesus! Now you're in love with the Dolphins. <laughs> no, Dolphins no. are your Super Bowl pick. No. no, but they also haven't beat anybody that like they're that that that's that was any good in my opinion. Like no. I think like I they they've beaten they they've beaten and handled the teams that they're supposed to, but they haven't beaten the teams that like were like oh we don't know what this game's gonna be like. So I don't I don't I don't I don't I definitely Dolphins are definitely my least favorite to get the number one seed at this point. I think I'm choosing the Ravens to get the number one seed. Yeah, I I think I'm going I'm I'm going the same direction. Especially I'm, especially now that we don't know Trevor Lawrence's future for that Jacksonville game because that would have had huge implications on who you think would probably get there. That would have been the biggest game of the and it and it might be if Trevor plays and yeah. they win this week against Cleveland, but I, that might be the biggest game of the year. And I said that I I tweeted that out too. I said everybody's talking about the Ravens and the 49ers. All of Ravens Twitter is talking about it. And I said that's not the game we have to like we can drop that game. Like I'm completely okay with getting my heart broken on Christmas to beat the Jags and the Dolphins. Like yeah. the Ravens control their own destiny. Yeah. And they with the way that they've played against <clears throat> top tier teams this year and completely blown them out every single time and the coaching just showing up when it matters the most like I can't pick against Baltimore yeah. and I know that I'm a Ravens fan but I yeah. mean just they're so talented everywhere yeah well it's, I mean I unfortunately I I do see the Chiefs winning out but I keep I, like after watching I, against the, the Packers, I think they lose to the Bills this weekend that's it's possible it really is I do um but I think the Bills have to win yeah yeah they and but then but looking at this here like I think the Ravens especially if Trevor Lawrence is out win these next two games I think the Dolphins win these next two games they're both what nine and three right now yeah the Dolphins and Ravens are nine and, and now three. the Chiefs have fallen eight and four like I think they both they both come into that that they, uh, they both have a tough tough game um Ravens play 49ers Dolphins play Cowboys that's a huge game for yeah. for individuals but then if you both win these next three games like that that meeting in week uh was that 17 yeah uh that could honestly determine the outcome of the um of the um of the number one seed to be yeah, honest that, like that, that might be the, that might come down to the most important game in the AFC, AFC this year yeah like and and all these Ravens fans as well keep saying that they don't want the number one seed, which is the most craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, how do you not want the number one seed just yeah. because of that one season? Like, yeah. this yeah. team is like light years better than that than that team. But yeah, and yeah. I feel like a lot more mature too. Almost. Yeah, way more mature. Like yeah. they were so young on that too. And I went and watched like uh, highlights of that year, and like 
they could not throw the ball the way that they're throwing the ball now. Like they were just running on teams and somehow teams weren't adjusting to it. It made no sense. They should have never went 14 and two that year. Like they yeah. probably should have snuck into a wild card. But um, yeah, I just don't see, I don't know. It, it's the tightest, like the AFC has the tightest race, even for the wild card. Like I was looking at the wild card saying that shit is freaking nuts. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, Pittsburgh can get in, Cleveland can get in. Um, the Colts now can probably have a yeah. real shot of getting – like the AFC is the toughest yeah. conference. Even without all these quarterbacks, like getting hurt, like guys are stepping up because they know like th it's do or die. Like you have to win almost every game to like stay on pace. And it's, I mean, it's crazy that we're already in, going into week 14. Yeah, I like, know. It's, I'm, I'm so off. sad. I can't believe we're already here. But, no, this, this is going to be a tight race all the way down to it. And – yeah, I don't know. Like, like you said, I, I do. I can see the Bills beating the Chiefs, but after that, I mean, I, of course, I don't know. Jake Brown it looked like like looked like the man <laughs> last night. He when might they, be him. They, they, it might be him. Well, let's. But, uh, well, what about the um? What about one of the best quarterbacks in the AFC, Zach Wilson? Okay, pal. Um, do we really want to get? Into I mean, this? he. Uh, I mean, so there was a report by Diana Rossini. I, I hope I said that right. Diana Rossini who said that Zach Wilson was reluctant to come in. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't believe I'm even saying this. He was basically, basically said, I don't want to play for you. So basically, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, like that is the most, like, he must be one of the best quarterbacks. He's he's in my top five now because that takes freaking balls. It does. To it does. go to Robert Sala and say, I'm not playing. Like, yeah. oh, I want you to play. Oh, hell no. You start Tim Boyle and freaking Trevor yeah. Simeon, hell no. I, I I saw I saw a report saying that that was that was the farthest thing from the truth. Like Robert Sala was saying that, but I have seen so many other reports saying <laughs> this word "reluctant," <laughs> like saying I, Jack, Zach Wilson is reluctant to play again for the Jets. And like, I mean, I don't know. I get it. Like, if if, if at this, if I'm Zach Wilson, like I want a different scenario. I want a different like team. I want to see if I'm any, any good. Honestly, like I, because I, your time with the Jets has not been good. Um, but honestly, I just I can't see. Like I said, there's been so many reports that <laughs> he's actually reluctant to play. <laughs> like, I, I just can't, can't imagine I... can't imagine his dad, Aaron Rodgers, is like <laughs> there's no way you're not you're just saying nah. I'm imagine good. that conversation. Yeah. Like that apparently in the report that said that Aaron Rodgers called him and then like tried to talk him out of it and he was still like iffy. Like, bro, there's no way that Zach Wilson said, yeah, bro, I'm not playing. Like, he's <laughs> like, bro, you got to play. Like, you got to keep us in playoff contention so I can get, no, nah, I'm not doing it. Like, and I saw a report that was about, so I saw it was Aaron Rodgers that saved it. And then I saw that he wasn't playing because of the guarantees in this contract. Like, that even fucking means anything at this point. Bro is not going to get another contract if he doesn't play. Like, who does he think he is, though? Like, he must think uh, – that's why I say he's a top quarterback in the AFC because name me another quarterback in the AFC who'd do that. Not one. I don't think one quarterback would do that. Do you agree with him, though? I mean, kind of Lamar last year, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> that but took some situation. Yeah, I mean, he deserved the money in that situation. <laughs> I guess you're right, but I, I just don't – I don't know what – I mean, do you think it's true? Because I'm back and forth. Because I saw Aaron Rodgers go on the Pat McAfee show today and basically say, like, it, whatever she said was the most horseshit thing he's ever heard. Yeah. Well, that, and that's as I, he should. But yeah. And that's even if, even if that wasn't like Aaron Rodgers is going to make it sound better than what it probably actually was. Like, it could be true, but I just, I can't see that happening. No. But at the same time, like, if you're Zach Wilson, you got benched, and not only did you, become the backup you became the third string yeah so that's bad he, the, 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 like new york is hanging on like and i don't even know what what their chance like like you just said the afc playoffs like i think the colts are in at the wild card spot at seven and five yeah. i don't even know what the jets are right now i think they're uh, like uh, four and eight four and four eight. and eight yeah four and eight so yeah i i I don't even know if they have a chance to make the playoffs at this point. They do they do rogers came on today and he said you know we we won a couple games like he was Course he's gonna sound confident but yeah that's yeah. what that's yeah. what it sounded like uh yeah but, but I, I mean i i don't i don't know i mean if i mean aaron Rodgers is is set on coming back and that's i mean obviously if there's no if there's no playoff contention at all he doesn't come back i don't think no that would make zero sense yes yes and what's what's sick is that i think he's slated to come back against my commanders if it's true so if Zach is it Wilson, in washington 
I'm not sure. If I'm it's sure. in Washington, we should go. I'm, I think I'm down. Yeah, I that would down. be really cool. Yeah. Cause then we can say we saw the most impossible shit happen. Like, there's no way, dude. I mean, he, yeah. <laughs> Pat McAfee asked him today if he actually tore his Achilles. He was like, "Do you believe? Like, I'm just a journalist. <laughs> like, did you actually tear it, or was it just, you know, a conspiracy?" Yeah. Um, but no, Zach. Zach's crazy for that. That I just I, cannot believe a third string quarterback would say no. I think I feel bad for him. I, we've had this conversation. I, just, I, feel, I feel so bad for, bad the for Jets him. organization. That, 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 that's all they got. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And to not go and sign Joe Flacco after Flacco just lit it up against the Los Angeles Rams this past yeah. weekend, somebody's losing their freaking job. He, did, he was already in the organization. Like, I, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. Uh, that's insane. Um, so let's talk about maybe two better quarterbacks. Uh, it was my favorite game of the entire week was the Chiefs and the Packers. And Jordan Love, and I'll pull the tweet up, but I said in a tweet that Jordan Love, going from Jordan Love, or let me look at it real quick. So it well, said... This was back in like 2020, 2020 when he was going to get drafted. I said, Green Bay is going to go from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love. Wow, that's a great transition. And then in another tweet that I have, I ranked the top five quarterbacks out of that... Um, out of that draft class, and I put, I think I put Joe Burrow number one, Tua number two, Jalen Hurts number three, Jordan Love at number four, and I put Justin Herbert at number five, which I was a huge Justin Herbert hater at the time, like him now. But um, yeah, it's crazy because you love him now. I know I love. I'll defend him and Jordan Love, but um, I mean, I just hated Jordan Love for a little bit because he kept losing me my fucking bets in the beginning of the year because I believed in him. But he's been special, man. He looks like Aaron Rodgers. Like, no joke. He, uh, like, the way that he, the way, the, okay, let me rephrase. The way that he is so confident when he throws the football and the different arm angles that he gives and the touch on the football, he's got a little bit of Aaron Rodgers in him. I'm not going to go and be Chris Collinsworth and, you know, suck Patrick Mahomes off and say <laughs> that he's Patrick Mahomes, but he has, like, those, like, once again, the eye test. Like, I look at both of them. I'm like, he's got qualities that looks like Aaron and Pat a little bit. I don't know what you feel about him, but I, I love Jordan. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm completely out on this. Like, I don't, and I don't know why you were so high on him in 2020. And <laughs> I guess I, I think I watched, where do you, I forget where Utah he, State or Utah something State. Utah like State. That. I watched, like, I was in college, bro. And I was like, just I, I, that year, I was like, everybody you else. You weren't even gives a it, degenerate right? better at that point. Like, I, I know. Don't, uh, Why but, are you watching Utah State? <laughs> I was watching. I swear to God, I got in the lab. I got it was when was 2020? My senior or uh, junior year of college. Yeah. I I got in the lab one night. I was like, I swear to God, it was like 2 a.m. on like a Friday night, and I had nothing to do. So I went and watched Jordan Love tape. I like went and looked up Jordan Love like highlights. I went and looked up his tape like. And I was like, dude, this guy reminds me so much of what Patrick Mahomes was. He turns the ball over a ton, but the way that he threw the football was so freaking impressive. But I was in the lab that night. Yeah. Until uh, like 5 a.m. in the morning, I was watching I Jordan that. Love highlights. And, and maybe it's coming to fruition now. Like I don't I don't know. But I I just I I I don't I don't know if it's I think Jordan Love is figuring it out, but I think more than that, I think it's this Green Bay Packers team is figuring it out yeah. more. And so like I I I I have no interest in watching the Green Bay Packers. So I'm gonna be honest. Oh, like, I do now. You yeah, don't want to watch them now? No, not at all. If they were <laughs> if they were not on the primetime game, I would have not watched that game. Like, I had no interest in watching. I have no interest still in watching the Green Bay Packers. To oh, be honest. I do. Like, I am. I'm just. I Jordan Love. Keep keep it up, I guess. But I'm I'm, just, <laughs> Dude, I'm not you... there yet. I'm not there yet. Like, okay, so Christian Watson pisses me the hell off too because every time he freaking touches a foot, he'll make. I swear to God, every time he has his biggest game, he gets freaking hurt. And I, I hope that he's all right. But, like, at the same time, like, he's a dog. Like, yeah. the dude is yeah. a freaking – well, I'm, I'm starting to believe he's just the second half of the season type of guy. Yeah, I feel like real. it was like it, I feel like it was a few weeks, maybe like two or three week, weeks earlier last year. But then he had like that one three-touchdown game last year, and then he just started going off and was a touchdown machine. And maybe maybe we're seeing the same thing. Like, I don't know how severe his injury was in that game. Um, but it looked bad. Yeah. It looked like a hammy. Um, but yeah. I was watching and I, I was thinking to myself, so there was a report 
Speaking of the Chiefs, uh, moving on from the Packers, <laughs> since you don't want to talk about them or care about them very yeah, much, I'm, even I'm, I'm very, I'm a, I, I'm going to sit on here for the rest of the year and talk about. Green, I'll just update you on Green right, Bay. Then Packers that'll games. be your segment, yeah, because <laughs> I am not watching the Green Bay Packers. And I also said that Mike Lafleur should get fired like earlier did. Yeah, i did i, I want to retract that statement and s- apologize because the way that he's turned around this team is super impressive yeah. and i was completely i don't even know what you just I you was, just thought he was he wasn't good for you i guess I was, love. I guess i was trying to get clickbait or something i don't know what the <laughs> hell i was doing but you just thought that he wasn't good for your boy jordan love I think yeah that's I, uh, yeah yeah maybe i'll buy a jordan love jersey <laughs> yeah i'll think about it but the the chiefs the other side i don't think so i don't think the team's locked in and this might just be a conspiracy theory or whatever you want to call it, but there was a report that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, and I hate hearing about it and talking about it, they moved in together. Big deal. I didn't know this. Huge didn't see this. deal. Huge deal. Didn't hear Heard about it this. Heard it on the radio, and apparently TMZ found it out because they find out about who everything oh, and everything. It's the weirdest. They're ruthless. They're, they're crazy. Ruthless. Yeah. That's insane. How do they even know that? How do you even find that out? But I believe them. I 100% believe anything that they say. Um, I don't think that this Chiefs team is locked in. And I think part of the problem is Taylor Swift showing up to these games and Travis Kelsey going on his bye week to wherever the hell he went outside the country to go see her and go to her concerts. And, you know, I just think that there's something off about this team mentally. And I'm blaming Taylor Swift. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm on the line on this one for sure. Because I mean, Travis Kelsey, I, I haven't looked at his stats, but I don't think he, he's not having like the year that we were used to him having. I feel like. Uh, did he lose a step, or did Taylor just? Does Taylor just have that good, good? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, but I, this was the first game that she's been in tennis that they have lost. She, they were four and zero before this game. But that was also before Travis made this trip down to Argentina right. to watch Taylor Swift at her concert. Yeah, and now they've lost, what, two in a row or something? But, they've lost two games ever since then. Yeah. They lost to... Uh, Broncos? Broncos, and then they yeah. lost to the Packers. Yeah. Well, she, I, this was the first one that she was in attendance that I know that they lost. Right. They were, I've been seeing it. That, yeah, they, they were 4-0 and with her in attendance or whatever. But... I don't, you might be on to something. I'm telling you. I'm telling I'm you it's her. Sure. I'm not sure. It's her. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I hate Brittany Mahomes, but they've won two Super Bowls with Brittany Mahomes. They don't win a Super Bowl this year with with Taylor Swift. I'm I'm in on the conspiracy. I'm not out on it. I'll tell you that. I'm not out on it. Yeah. I, 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 being for real, I don't know what's going on with this Chiefs team, but that wide receiving core is really, really bad, and I hate, you know, they – I brought up Lamar a lot, but I mean, all of the stuff that was talked about about Lamar is now coming on to these other yeah. teams, and they're giving them the benefit of the doubt, and they didn't give it to yeah. them. But I'll give it to Mahomes. The receiving core is not very good, yeah. and I think well, that's, uh, I want to think about like who did they have on the team last year that's different, like receiving. Juju Smith, Juju Schuster. Smith, and he was he was usable. Like he was a good like I feel like third down receiver. Like, um, but like other than that, who else did they have? Like. Because this Rasheed Rice kid honestly is not that bad. Like, yeah, he's, he's probably coming, um, he's coming in like I don't I don't I don't know if I want to say he's like as good as Juju was for them last year, but like I feel like he's been serviceable. But yeah, I just I good. think it's more for them. It's been almost like the absence of Travis Kelsey. Yeah, and, like, I don't know if like defensive just figured it out. Like they're like I still don't get it. Like how this man is still getting wide open at some point and but making also, yak yards. I, he's the slowest tight end I've ever seen in my life. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Like makes no sense. But this guy, this guy said something about Mahomes. Oh, uh, Jason Brown. Yeah, Jason Brown. So Jason Brown was a. I, I don't know exactly who he is, and I don't really give a shit. But I he had two videos that were super interesting this from, week. He was from the uh, Netflix show. Yeah, um, from Last Chance You last or chance something. You. Yep. And he had allegations that he told a player that he was going to be Hitler to him. And this kid was a freshman. He went to like the board or something and like got him to resign. And then the next team that he yeah. went to, he went two and eight. So take this well, with a grain of salt. If, if you've watched the show, like you know this man will say anything. And like at this point, I think now that he's out of like – that scenario, like he just says some wild shit, but like On I purpose. also for sure. But I also think that he just has some wild takes in general. Like, right. So, so I want you to watch this video of Jason Brown. I want you to tell me what you think about it. And this is him talking about Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes, I've seen him before. I've seen John Elway, bro. 
Mahomes couldn't hold John Elway's fucking left nut in the cold winter. <laughs> I'm not hating on Mahomes, I'm telling you the truth about Mahomes. Without Andy Reid, Mahomes is nothing. Put him in Chicago, how good is Mahomes? You're talking like about him. a really talented guy who maybe hasn't taken the lead to make it into a playoff. I don't think he'd be good at all. You know that 50% of his throws are at or behind the line of scrimmage? He is the lowest rated Super Bowl winning quarterback of all time. He is in a gimmicky system that is devised to help him succeed. That means they take a tremendous skill set. I'm not knocking Mahomes, I'm not saying he's not a freak, that he doesn't have a whip and a cannon. But all the off platform, three quarter throws, and the left and the shovel, all that shit, is because Andy Reid has to do certain things in the system to, ben to use his skill set to allow his team to succeed, which even shows more of why Andy Reid is so great. Okay, so craziest shit I've ever heard is, so he says that he's the lowest rated quarterback in Super Bowl history. I went and looked. He technically is, but the... What, 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 what does he mean by that? I, I don't know. I thought it was passer rating, and I just looked at like the past five, quarter, or past five Super Bowl. I didn't go digging because I watched him in the Super Bowl, and he was phenomenal, so I really didn't give a shit. But mm. I think that that 49ers game brought the brought it down because that 49ers defense was legit one of the best defenses that we've seen in a while and why they made the Super Bowl. And he didn't turn it on until the fourth quarter. They only scored 10 points. But uh, very, very interesting take saying John Elway, uh, Mahomes couldn't hold John Elway's jock strap or whatever the hell he it's, said. It's effing left nut. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it's yeah. the exact quote. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think about that? I I I don't see it. I don't. Um, is he on this one? I mean, is he? Cooking? I mean, I, I will say like the 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 interview that or the uh, the podcast that I saw people were talking about like last year when he won MVP. Like his receivers had a like the above average yak yards. I did. I don't. Yeah, I, did I don't see that. don't remember that. Like don't don't even re really recall that. But I mean, I don't know how much of this is true. Like that most of his like. Um, his passes are behind the line or like... A yeah, I don't yards. know how true... I probably should have researched that, but I just didn't want to put any time into what he said. Yeah, no. I, 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 I think he has another take about Lamar as well. Yeah, um, he does. I'll pull that up too. But um, talking about Mahomes, of course he wouldn't be as good with the Bears. Like, yeah. nobody would be as good with the, the Bear. Like, no, you I can mean, add any elite quarterback to them and they probably wouldn't be as good. We, we've seen it. It's been a revolving door of quarterbacks in, in that in that um, organization and none of them have had have had success. I mean... It's, it's insane. Like, to hate on the guy, I mean, he says, like, he's great and all, but, yeah. like, that's so out... Uh, that's out of pocket. But this is what he says about Lamar Jackson, which I thought was freaking insane so here is jason brown talking about lamar jackson cj Stroud grew up you know 10 minutes away i said on week one he's already better than lamar jackson i have a tweet out there bernard pollard who should want to Bowl for the ravens who straight up came on the show and said lamar couldn't tell you what a fucking protection was if you what? shoved it up his ass but you gotta look full picture quarterback influence on the team yeah like lamar is winning games for that football team they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. No, they're not. No, they're they are. Not. I think they are. You Lamar is not going to get past the second round because he's not sustainable. He's going to go back to his old ways. And what is his old ways? I don't know what coverage rolled. So now I don't know who's hot. I'm holding my dick in my hand and I get sacked. Oh, guess what? I just blew my MCL because I tried to run around. And it works out when he's healthy. Right. Now, if he's not available, how is he helping the team? That's a different discussion, though. Health for efficiency. But it matters. It all matters. I mean, it's, it's, matter. it's still him. You're paying this guy to win you games, and he's not available. Uh, I'll let you have the first first day. Yeah, on this um, one. <laughs> I don't even want to say anything about this guy or give him more clout than what he's getting right now. I mean, the six hundred thousand views and just people just like going at him. Um, uh, so, so a couple things. C.J. Stroud is phenomenal. He said it from the first game of C.J. Stroud's career when he played the Ravens that, yeah, I, I don't believe that at all. I don't think he ever, ever said that. Um, and what's also crazy to me is that he says Lamar Jackson's injury issues, but he doesn't mention all the other quarterbacks who have had injury issues like I talked about. And 
he says that he's going to blow out his MCL or ACL, which he's never had knee problems in his career, uh, except for he had the knee problem, but he's never had like a torn Torn ACL or anything like that. So he has had knee problems, but that is just insane. I'm bookmarking it because I, Lamar's going to make it past, and I'll I'll say it right on here. He's going to make it past the divisional round this year. He is coming for blood, and all right, he can say this kind of shit now, but like, I just think that he's going to be proven wrong, and that's that's what I'll say about it. But I uh, create crazy shit that he's he's talking about there about C.J. Stroud already being better than Lamar Jackson. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, like I said before, we even watch these clips. I feel like a lot of his are just clickbait. Like he's trying to get people to react to him, um, but I mean, and I don't even know if it's true the whole Bernard Pollard thing. Okay, uh, let me let me tell you about Bernard yeah. Pollard. He freaking hates Lamar Jackson. I have gotten into arguments with Bernard Pollard on Twitter years ago about Lamar Jackson, and he says he's not a sustainable quarterback. He's not good at throwing the football. Like he stands. He stands on business like he he stands by it. And for him to bring up Bernard Pollard, who doesn't know ball, you if you go and look at Bernard Pollard's tweets, he he does not know. He doesn't know anything about football, which is blowing my mind. He thinks he's a Ravens legend. And for him to bring someone on who already hates Lamar Jackson and make that your point is so stupid because Bernard Pollard's just hurt by the Ravens. So the Ravens cut him after the Super Bowl year, and he thinks that he would have made a difference if he would have stayed on the team. He made one big play in his entire career, and that was knocking out Ridley in the AFC Championship game. And that is what his uh yeah, that's what his resume is. He's he was never him. So yeah. I, I just So I, so it sounds like he's just he's become a Ravens hater, but I I, I mean I Maybe in the beginning of, of like Lamar's career, like I I could see it. Maybe yeah. like he did have trouble like reading defenses and yeah, that was like nuts. reading coverages and stuff yeah. like that. But at this point, like in Lamar's career, like you said, like his passing has improved like a thousand times. Like he's one of the he's the third most accurate quarterback in the NFL. And if you watch him, like he reads a defense super super well. He takes what's given to him now. He used to you know, try to run the ball, like try to make plays outside of the pocket. Yeah. Like he tries to stay in the pocket yeah. and throw the ball. And he, he brings up like he's just going to go back to his old ways or whatever, but like the, he's progressed so much as a quarterback going back to his old ways of just tucking the ball and running. Like that's pretty damn successful for him as well. Yeah, like, so he can win he either way. To. Yeah. I mean, he won without – at first he probably couldn't read the defense the same and he was still winning games. Like now that he can throw the ball, you don't think that he's going to make it past the set. I don't know. Yeah. I think they're making it past second round. Um, so this Thursday um, is, and I'll do this really quick because it's probably the worst game of the entire year. It's the Patriots versus Steelers. Whoever makes these schedules, like, I, I, it's been awful on prime time. It's gotten better throughout the weeks, but this is just the worst of the worst. So DraftKings has this game at 30 total points, which is the lowest that DraftKings has ever had a NFL football games total. Um, I bet on the Patriots this past weekend, so I watched them. Uh, it was the worst game I've ever seen in my entire life, and I'm not over-exaggerating. The Patriots had two opportunities to score at least field goals, and they would have tied the game if they would have taken the field goals. But instead, Bill Belichick went and asked Bailey Zappi to convert a fourth and five and a fourth and three. Um, any thoughts on uh, on this Thursday night game? Any Bets maybe just to get. Are you taking the under in that game or the over? I'm feeling the over. Are you really? Yeah, I'm kind of feeling the. I feel after, like it's after a trap. We just, after we just watched the Patriots and Chargers and the score was the total of six, and we yeah, like Chargers are supposed to be. That's what I'm saying. Offense. That's what I'm saying though. Like it feels like a trap. It's like oh, they just scored six points. They don't have Kenny. Pickett. Yeah, I, I can see the argument for the trap, but I mean, it, we're we're about to watch a god awful at even before Kenny Pickett got hurt, a god awful Steelers offense against an even worse. Patriots offense. I want to see Malik and both have both have solid defenses. So, like you said, it it might just be a trap game. Like they they could. And the Steelers are favored by six. I did see that. So that means they have to score. So what are they thinking? They must think Vegas must think they're they're going to win like seven to nothing or like seven to. I I don't even know another another six to nothing game. Yeah, I don't know. Nobody wins. Yeah, that that's insane. Um, and 
I, I, the only reason that I'm just talking about this game is just because it's a primetime game that we're going to have yeah, to watch. I think, I think this is going to be the first primetime game I do not watch. I think I'm going to watch. Think. It might be crazy. Yeah. Like, what I want to see Malik. I said it earlier, I think Malik Cunningham should play. I don't understand why he's not playing at all. Like, I feel like he would bring a spark. That's mini Lamar. He is known as mini Lamar. He went to Louisville. Like, he. He, I think he had stat. He broke some of Lamar's stats, like passing wise, in Louisville. Like I would love to see him play and bring a spark. And I might take the over just because he might he might show up. And I mean, Bill Belichick. I mean, they're two and ten. They have nothing to lose. So yeah, at this yeah. point, um, but yeah. maybe if, if 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 I see you place a bet on this game, I think I'm gonna have an intervention for you. Oh, though. I'm I'm placing a bet. I might. I, you know what? I'll place maybe a two unit bet on it just for fun, and I'll just pick a. Maybe the t- I got to bet the total, right? Because that'll be fun. Like, Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make it interesting. Uh, so better games this weekend. We have two really good games. The Eagles are involved again. The Eagles and Cowboys. Who do you think is going to win this game? And this is the biggest game of the year for the Eagles more than it is for the Cowboys. Says the Cowboys got nothing to lose here. Yeah, no, pretty much. I mean, on it, thinking about it, like Cowboys have – the, uh, they have a shot at the number one seed in the NFC. Like, yeah. is it is it is it likely? Like, who knows? But um, I don't know. I kind of got shit on by saying that uh that that the Eagles dominated that game. And I I thinking about it, like maybe it was closer than what yeah, I thought. Yeah, the comments it was. went crazy. They on did. You. They did. But at the same time, Eagles still win that game. Um, Eagles are coming off an embarrassing loss to the San Francisco Forty yeah. Nine ers. No, they that yes, they are still sitting in the number one seed. Um, but. This game, honestly, is more important, I think, for the Eagles. Way more important. Yeah, but and at the same time, like you said, the, the Cowboys have nothing to lose at this point. Like, they're yeah. going to make the playoffs, like, for sure. Um, but they can come out there and they can play ball for free. Like, and after they need it, I feel like the Eagles need a bounce back win more than anything to like establish that they're still the top dog in the NFC. Cause after last week, I, I, I have no argument for them being, being the best team in the NFC yeah, for sure. Getting embarrassed like that is just, so, so who's going to win? Who would you take? <laughs> I'm going to take the Cowboys. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm rolling with the Cowboys too. Yeah. And uh, I'm probably going to get meme for this and I'll make a funny TikTok if it loses. But I think the Cowboys, honestly, like it might be one of the highest scoring games of the year just because the Cowboys defense looked a little bit fraudulent. And that's why I think the Eagles are going to stay like in it. It's in Dallas, Jerry's world. And I, both defenses just aren't good enough for me to yeah. win a Super Bowl or to well, like and related relating back to what, what we were talking about earlier and like the MVP conversation, like especially for you, like, and I, I, I guess I, I guess I agree with like Dak is more of on the MVP race than anybody. Brock Purdy just diced them up. Yeah. Imagine like what Dak's pass, about Their to do. pass defense is not great. No. And, like, I know the Eagles really, they missed a lot of tackles and everything like that. And, like, they, like I think 49ers had a ton of yak yards or whatever. Not helping Brock Purdy, whatever. Um, but Dak Prescott is hot right now. And yeah. I think that, especially it's in Dallas, like, I think that they have a chance because I, I know it's tough to play in, in Philadelphia. Like, like, like we were talking about, like, the Philadelphia crowd is insane. Like, they're loud. Like, so I think Dak might have like a career game, to be honest. Yeah, I'm taking the Cowboys. I think that they. Do we do, do we know the spread on that right now? I do not know the spread. What would your guess be? I would say minus three Dallas, because really? at home, because of them being at home and the Eagles coming off that big I, loss. I honestly think, especially after what we just saw this past week, with them favoring the 49ers in Philly. Yeah. I think I'm still. Gonna, I think it's maybe Eagles minus two and a half. All right, let's see what it is. Oh, wow. Wow, Dallas minus three and a half. Wow. Oh, wow. That's that's a half point more than what I thought. That's – I might take that. I might bring it down to three. I think I like Dallas My, – I'm going to see how it how it moves. But I also see – I mean, Eagles plus three and a half or minus 120, and I think the public is going to hammer that because of their – Loss, and I think everybody's going to think that the Eagles are going to bounce back, but I just don't see where that happens now. Another another great game this week is the Chiefs versus the Bills, and I think I said earlier I think the Bills are going to win this game. I truly think that they are in a spot where they have to win. They need it more 
than the Chiefs do, and it's just a huge spot for Josh Allen to win a big game this year. Yeah, I, I guess the only argument I would have is that I think the Chiefs need to win this game for any shot at the number one seed, though. Yeah, I yeah. think I think that's my only argument, and I guess I guess in another way, coming off of a loss like this to the Green Bay Packers that nobody thought was going to happen, like. I think they have to find a way to to bounce back and get a win, and so I think I'm taking the Chiefs in this one. Oh man, I'm gonna take the Bills. Let me see. What would your guess be on the spread of Bills? Yeah, do we Chiefs? know where they are? Uh, they are in Kansas, Kansas City. City. Who? Let's say I'm taking Chiefs minus four and a half. Okay, I'm gonna go Chiefs minus five and a half. I'm gonna say that they get the extra point there. Wow, holy shit, we are way off. I, I'm telling you, even Vegas thinks that Buffalo has a pretty good shot here. It is minus two and a half Kansas City. They are at home against Buffalo, and I, I that's a that's a good line. I'm surprised it's not three for the Chiefs coming off a loss, but Vegas is probably getting you to try and take Kansas City after a big loss. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm gonna take Buffalo. I think. I don't know. I don't know who needs it more. I have no idea. Um, but hopefully, if Taylor Swift's at the game, I'm I'm taking the Bills. Oh, for uh, sure. yeah. I don't sure. think they're locked in. I don't <coughs> think they're locked in. So we're gonna end on a. So we're gonna have a new segment called "What Would NFL Quarterbacks' Regular Job Be If They Weren't in the NFL?" So, yeah, I think you have some quarterbacks that you have some regular jobs for them. So I'm curious to know what you think they would do outside of football. Okay. Okay. So starting out, I'm uh, Kirk cousins. I mean, he is like the dad of the NFL. So I am saying that Kirk cousins is an accountant. Okay. Exactly what you do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, you guys exactly. Are the so, boys. so reliable, like you can trust them. Um, handsome. <laughs> um, uh, it's, no like, bias here at all either. No, not not at all. Like <laughs> no bias. Uh, like Kirk Cousins is a guy that you would trust with your money. Do, yeah. Do you agree? Do yeah, you agree I think that? he's definitely a guy who you know puts everything into his four hundred one k. Like is investing. Like yeah. definitely thinks about his future. He's he's a he's a family guy. Like and as we see, he loves football. So like if you're an accountant, you have to love accounting. Um, especially if you're a tax accountant like I am. Like, well, do you love it though? Like, are uh, you are you skinning the game? Just in case my company seizes this or sees this, I'm gonna say, yeah, is <laughs> yeah. my favorite. <laughs> but no, he's the type of guy that like buys in, you know. So whatever he's doing, he's gonna love it and he's gonna do the best that he can at it. So that's right. uh, that's my first name, and that's I think Kirk Cousins would be a great accountant. I agree with you. That's a good one. I don't think I have any other um, jobs that he could maybe do. I really have to think about it. Maybe a stay at home dad. I could see him okay. do that yeah, too. Fair, fair. Yeah. I could see his wife bringing in the cash. Yeah, yeah, I could see, that. and he'd be perfectly comfortable with that. Yeah, Let exactly. His wife be the breadwinner, which is which is okay. Like that's yeah, great. Yeah, complete. I'm not, not shitting I, on that I, at I, all, dude. I I wish. Yeah. Like yeah. I will be a stay at home dad. You'll for, see me scrubbing dishes and vacuuming floors all day long. I keep begging my girlfriend to be a freaking traveling nurse so I can stay at home. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll I'll give you one of mine. So Justin Herbert, I put him as a surfer. I think that one was the easiest one. Uh, just the hair in itself, he doesn't love the spotlight. Yeah. And I think that I could just see him being one of those, you know, surfer guys who just like stays to himself, doesn't talk to many people, doesn't party, just fully locked into surfing. But yeah, I would I would put Justin Herbert as a surfer in Hawaii. I could see that. I could see that. Um I, I think I think more that more than anything that sells me is is the hair I guess yeah the hair um I could definitely see him out there you know throwing up throwing up the sign yeah. ripping waves like dude the waves are sick today <laughs> dude like I could definitely I could see that out of him and like the, like hearing him talk like I could even I could hear yeah that. I like, could imagine that yeah honestly I could see him like stoned out of his mind just like dude I'm gonna go rip some waves dude <laughs> yeah, for like sure. I could definitely see that coming from Justin Herbert for sure um so yeah next up on mine I'm going uh Trevor Lawrence and. Okay. I, I would say that he's just gonna he's gonna go back to his family on Easter Island and be one of those statues. Oh wow, do, that's do, a good one. Do you know what I'm talking about? Kinda, yeah, but yeah. not exactly. Well, if you guys haven't seen it, I think we'll we'll pull up a picture here because yeah. once you see it, you won't be able to unsee it. So, so yeah, that's 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 what I'm going with. Okay, okay. Um, for my next one, um, I have Russell Wilson. So I put him as a cringy motivational speaker. So I feel like he would go to high schools. Go to colleges, you know, give 
this motivational speech where everybody's just like, you are the cheekiest guy I've ever heard in my life and you have never done any of these things. Just because every time they talk, you can tell it's fake. And I see all these motivational speakers on TikTok and I'm like, you know what? Russell Wilson could definitely fill in that role. Uh, yeah, no, I 100% see it. I do. And I, Russ has got a lot of good qualities about him. And but like, no, they spe- <laughs> no, no, he's no, he's fake as hell. Yeah, yeah. I just it, like, I don't know. I, I see it because I feel like these motivational speakers, like they hold themselves like they're they're better than everyone else almost. Yeah. And like, that's that's like it's, even hearing it from some NFL players, like the, the Pro Bowl players or whatever, like him and his wife, Sierra, think that they are like the biggest celebrities in the world. And yeah. I mean, so, Mr. Unlimited. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's got to be the cringiest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Life. And honestly, I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't feel that way if what transpired last year didn't happen. To yeah. Be honest. I know. Like, he had all those, all those things of cut, like, let Russ cook, like, Broncos country. Let's ride. Like, that, yeah, that whole thing. Bad. Yeah. That's, that, no, that's, that's, that's pretty spot on. I don't think I'd go anywhere else that way. <laughs> um, and my final one, Mac Jones. I know he's not he's not the starting quarterback. I, eh, like it's like him and Bailey Zappi, like they keep like <laughs> jumping back and forth or whatever. I'm gonna go him as a car salesman. Oh wow, yeah, that he, fits him perfect for sure. Like he, they, they're one, they're shady, they're dirty. Like I, I don't, I'm sure you guys have seen the clips of him throwing some like cheap shots and stuff. Like for me, that's him throwing like the uh, the car salesman throwing on the extra fees and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, without yeah. telling you, like yeah. that, that's that's my like resemblance to that. And then um, the other thing is, I mean, if you've ever seen the show Family Guy, they literally have a scene of Peter Griffin in a Patriots jersey selling cars. Like, Mac Jones, <laughs> if you don't lock it in, buddy, that's going to be you next year. <laughs> literally. He actually might fulfill that role. And I, he, uh, what what company, though? I think he'd definitely work at Ford. Ford? Hmm. Or Chevy. Or Chevy. I don't even know if he's good enough for that, to be yeah. honest. I'm Maybe like Kia? Hyundai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I could see... I, if he ever became a car salesman, that would be the last person I go yeah, to to buy yeah. a car from. And he's been selling himself to the Patriots organization for how, <laughs> for how long now? I yeah, mean, he's pretty damn good at it. He's pretty good with his words, I would say. <laughs> uh, I actually have two more. So uh, I went over the limit, but I think the last one fits perfectly. So I'll do this one. Uh, Gardner Minshew. Uh, I said that he would be a construction worker. He definitely is ripping cigs, ripping zins, ripping the Red Bull in the morning, like waking up at 3 o'clock like ready to roll, freaking hates his job, hates his wife, hates everything, and he just complains, but he works hard. Yeah. And I just I couldn't find anything else of what he could be other than a construction worker. No, 100%. And I'd love to pull up the clip here of him after the uh, overtime win that they just had this past week. Yeah, wild. Of him just going nuts <laughs> in the locker room. Yeah, like, freaking playing con- like adultery in yeah. like at totally, 5 a.m. Could totally see him on a construction site, rock music playing, 12 pack deep of beer just <laughs> just rocking out with the with the bros you know yeah, so, yeah. yeah. he'd be a guy i'd want to hang out with yeah for sure um and to end it i had the sean watson um i put him in jail <laughs> 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 i mean it's only fitting as soon as you said the name i knew you were going with that but one if, but, if he, <laughs> but if he wasn't in the nfl he'd be in jail right now yeah, but let's be yeah. real so honestly like it what else could he be yeah yeah and honestly, if he, if, if we're being real right now, if he wasn't such a good quarterback in Houston, he'd be in jail right now. Exactly. If he was a t- if he was a mid quarterback like this, and whole if whole he was career, Zach Wilson, he's in jail. oh he's in jail for sure for he's the rest of his jail. life. I mean, I don't want to hop all the way into this and <laughs> whatnot, but yeah, okay. But, yeah, YouTube's gonna take us down. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, but, maybe maybe porn star. I don't. <laughs> 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 oh my god all right i think that's where we're gonna end it jake thank you for joining me and having some laughs and uh once again this is the i'm him sports podcast show whatever you want to call it once again and if you guys could just do us a favor and like and subscribe it means the most to us it takes two seconds out of your day and you'll get updates on every time that a video comes out or a short comes out and uh, we're super excited to be able to give this content to everybody and uh, once again, Jakey, uh, Jakey, I almost just called you Jakey. <laughs> Jake, thank you for joining me. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully your prediction is right that the Ravens make the number one seed.
Yeah, for for your sake, I hope so. And honestly, at this point, Commanders are out, so it's, I guess Ravens are my my team going forward. So yeah, and if the Ravens don't make the AFC Championship this year, I'm gonna be an absolute piss, <laughs> um, and I might not be able to do this after that. But uh, anyway, next week we're also I'm heading to Jacksonville, so look out for a vlog video that will be coming out the week after that. It's gonna be super exciting. I'm gonna interview some people at the tailgates. I'm going to show you guys what the experience is like. I tried to get to the pool, you know, the pool that they have, yeah. it was $20,000. So unless people can like, and subscribe this, I'm probably not going to be able to afford that. Unfortunately, we'll drop his memo down below. <laughs> yeah. Please uh, donate to my cause of being in the pool while watching the Ravens and Jaguars on Sunday night football. And uh, we will see you again next week.